All right. Today we're going to do basically problems. The homework is all about using the kinematic equations, and so we're going to do problems with kinematic equations. And this here is one of the homework problems, what I'm doing for my demonstration here. So I'm going to take this thing of twine, toss it up in the air, and catch it. So we have terms we've learned like velocity and acceleration that are vectors. So we don't talk about what's happening while I'm throwing it. I mean, we can later on, but right now we just don't have a facility for it. So you're only analyzing from after it leaves my hand, while it's in the air, until I catch it. During that time, we say it's in free fall. That is, the only thing acting on it is gravity. So as it's going up, what direction is, and I know this is a dumb question, but who wants you to answer? What direction is the velocity as it's going up? Away from the <laughs> Well, just question. use a, a normal, regular direction, nothing more complicated. Away from the book? North would be that direction. Oh, south. South would be that direction. West should be that direction. East would be that direction. Oh, oh, yeah, there we go. It was going up while it was going up. Right? I, said, I said it was a dumb question. Just making sure that we have that clear. The velocity is up when it's going up. What about when it's coming down? What direction is the velocity? Yeah. Down. Down. Excellent. So we, we've got the pattern now. <laughs> what about at its highest point? What's the zero. velocity then? Zero. 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 For how long? For okay, it's momentarily zero. So we've got the velocity down. Good enough. Now, as it's going up, what's happening to, and let's go with the word speed. What's happening to the speed as it's going up? It's Decreasing. So if the speed is decreasing, what does that tell you about the acceleration? It's negative. Okay? Negative is a correct answer. Decelerating is also a correct answer. And it's actually more along the lines of what I wanted, except for I don't like to use that word. It's negative acceleration. Well, that, that's what you said. It's in the direction opposite to the velocity. Because the velocity was, was, or the speed was decreasing, that means that it's Slowing down some acceleration to opposite velocity, which is the definition of deceleration. Which I, obviously, I could say, oh no, that's not right. So, we technically, <laughs> and since we consider a positive, negative was also a correct answer. What? So, technically, it's still accelerating. Oh, it's absolutely accelerating, but it's accelerating downward. Now, when it's coming down, what's happening to the speed? It's increasing. And so, if its velocity is downward and the speed is increasing, what direction is the velocity changing? Downward. So when it was going up, so that means acceleration is downward. When it was going up, acceleration is downward. When it was coming down, acceleration is downward. And now we have the one that causes people the most problems. What about its acceleration right at its peak? How is the velocity changing when it's right at its peak? Constant. Is it constant because the velocity is constant? Doesn't the velocity go to zero? Like it's going negative, yeah. and then it goes to zero, and then it goes to positive? It, right. It, it, well, it was positive, it went to zero, and went to negative. But yeah, that's the idea. So the velocity was changing. Now, the acceleration is constant, but it's not zero. It's negative. It's pointing down because the velocity just before the peak was up, the velocity just after the peak was down. So the change of velocity was down. And so at the peak, its acceleration was not zero. Because a lot of people want to say, oh, acceleration is zero. You think about the car, and you start getting speed and acceleration confused. So the acceleration was downward during the entire flight. And then we have the principle of free fall, which we will clarify when we get to dynamics of y, that says that while it's in free fall, any types of free fall, the acceleration is what Sarah's been saying for the last five minutes. Negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, what does the negative mean? Okay. Now, so when I'm using a vector, when I define up as positive, then I say it's minus 9.8 meters per second squared in the upward direction. In physics, we use an abbreviation for the acceleration of gravity that's just G. And so we will see this all over the place, and we'll use it all over the place. G equals 9.80 meters per second squared. 
And yes, it varies from place to place, but 9.80 is a very good approximation for the continental United States. Notice that's a positive value. G, when you write the letter G, that means a positive 9.80 meters per second squared. It's the magnitude of the acceleration of gravity. And then the direction is down. So if you do a vector and you define up as positive, then that's why you have G with a vector sign. Like that, G with a vector sign is minus G in the up direction. That little hat, or correct, correct, however you pronounce it. I always said correct, but apparently I'm wrong. Yeah, I, I looked it up, and it's carrot. It's just spelled like it's French, but apparently not. <laughs> um, it means magnitude of one for whatever is underneath it and whatever direction that is. So if we call it a unit vector, unit meaning magnitude of one. So that's just defining the direction. So it's minus g up. Looking it up for me? I don't know how to pronounce it. It's weird. Well, I, I, I looked up, and of course, you never know how accurate the places that tell you how to pronounce words are. Now, our kinematic equations, we very briefly introduced these last class period. And then you have this homework, and a good percentage of you are well through the homework that uses those to give you practice. These equations up here were previously introduced, and then these here are derived from them. If you use calculus, well, these two here are restatements of the ones above, just solving for change in position, solving for change in speed. And then the one below you get by saying, if acceleration is constant, and remember for physics 151, it's always going to be constant. You just don't have the math. You have to be able to do calculus to have changing acceleration. So this one here can be derived using algebra and the equations above it, or it can be derived much more simply just using integration. And then this here is, again, just algebraic manipulation of the equations above to eliminate time. So these equations have different usefulness. Notice this one here has no acceleration. So if you have a problem with no acceleration, well, that's a good one to use. It's also the same. What's the difference between that equation and this one here? This part here is, of course, additional, but there's something else that's different. Well, that I'm ignoring the part that I'm covering with my hand. What's different between this equation and this equation, ignoring what my hand is covering? Uh, initial velocity. This is initial velocity, and that's average velocity. So they're not the same thing. So this one we use if we have the average velocity, or if we have an acceleration of zero, the average velocity is the initial velocity. This one here has no position. If I don't know the position and I'm not looking for position, this might be the equation that's going to work easiest for me. This one here has all the variables, which is why it's the one we use a vast preponderance of the time. And then this one here has no time. So if we're not given time and we're not looking for time, this might be the one that's going to be the easiest. When I was taking this class in, in college, my teacher didn't give us the equations, and I didn't remember this equation. And so on the test, we had a problem that I could have done in one step if I remembered this equation. But since I didn't, I had to use these equations up here to derive this equation and then solve the problem. Yeah, it took a little longer than it should have. But... I don't value you spending your time memorizing, so I just give them to you. You have to be able to use them. So with these, we can calculate how speed and velocity, speed and velocity, we're doing one dimensional, so speed and velocity be the same thing. Speed and position change with time. So here is just a, a first problem. I'm gonna go look at this, then go to the next slide, and then I'm gonna change to one note. Um, everyone should have received an email inviting them to OneNote. I now have a link on Moodle 
that you can click to take you to OneNote as well. And so, you know, if you go to OneNote, you can actually on your screen have what I'm writing up here follow along in, in roughly real time. And you have access to all the materials I use in class there. Okay, so this here is just the left half reiterating what I did with my demonstration earlier in the class period. Talking about the acceleration was downward. Now this picture uses 9.81 meters per second squared instead of 9.80. Notice it has a bold A for a vector. Because it's one dimensional motion, they didn't put up. They just used a negative sign to mean down. So the acceleration in all parts of the flight was constant, 9.81 meters per second squared. Because apparently they're, you know, like, well, Alaska's too far north. <laughs> but, you know, somewhere where it's a higher acceleration of gravity than we have here. Your one note uh, is an open. It's just page not telling you. What? Yeah. It really. I think it's email. Huh? I that's weird. It should have been, you should have received it like last. Oh, yeah, you probably didn't because I probably sent it on Monday and you weren't in the class yet. You should have because you were in the class when I sent it. Anyway, according to Microsoft, the link I gave you should work for everyone. Thank you, Microsoft, for that. Um, I, will, I will check it some more. It, it worked for me, but maybe it's because I was already logged in or something. Okay, this picture on the left is actually what we're going to work problems with. A gentleman is throwing the ball upward, and when it leaves his hand, it has an upward speed of 13 meters per second squared. It goes up, and we have at time one, it's at height 8.10 meters, time two, height 6.40 meters, and so on. We also have this picture here where he drops it. Now here's something that's just good to store in your memory banks. The speed is a function of height. Doesn't matter if it's going up or down, it's gonna have the same speed at the same height. So as the ball goes up, it's slowing down, as it comes down, it's speeding up, it'll have the same speed at the same elevations, just the velocity's in the opposite direction. So that's useful to know. Yeah, the speed is a function of height. What's what? What's happening when calls? No, for for an object in free fall. Okay. Yes, for an object in free fall. <laughs> yeah, that would be <laughs> that would be a boldly wrong statement. <laughs> so, if he drops the ball, or excuse me, he throws the ball downward with the same speed that he threw it upward, it's going to have the same speeds for the rest of the flight as the ball has coming down at the same elevations. The reason that's a good thing to keep in your memory bank is sometimes you can shorten the solution to a problem by working things like to the peak and then from there on, or you know, reversing the direction of the throw. And, you know, there's, there's different ways that you can use it, so it's always good to remember that the speed for an object in free fall is just a function of the height. And of course, the starting condition. I should specify that because obviously I can throw this not very hard or pretty hard, and it's gonna have different speed, different heights. So let's go to, I think the, actually I'm already in one note, what am I saying? Let's go to our problem here. So I have some questions and I'm dealing with this picture for A. So I'm not dealing with B here. What is the maximum height it reaches is the first question. The second question, what's the speed at each of the designated heights? And finally, how tall is the cliff if it hits the ground 10 seconds after it was thrown up? So this is our first really organized solving of a problem. Obviously, I'm going to do the first organized solving problem. Then after I'm done, you're going to solve one Yay! with me here to help. So first, some steps for solving it. And actually, I'm just going to set my screen so we can see both at the same time and work from there. So first, examine the situation, determine which physical principles are involved. 
right now we have one principle. So that's a real easy thing. What principles are involved? Okay, gravity. No, we're ignoring air resistance. Height. Okay, height, height is a variable ball. I'm looking for ideas. There's, we only have one type of problem right now. And Lost. I will give you the answer rather than having people. Lost. What's getting that? <laughs> the kinematic equations. Right now, that's basically all we have to work with. I mean, we have breaking things into components if it's a vector, but this is not two dimensional. So that's not what we're doing. It's just one dimensional kinematic equations. So for this problem, kinematic equations is our idea. Now it says to draw a simple sketch. Because I was given a fine picture already, I'm not going to redo the sketch. Right? That's not necessary here. Make a list of what's given and can be inferred from the problem as stated. So not everything is given. So what is given? What variables are given? Okay, well, in this case, we're, it's using Y because it's vertical. You can use X as well. It doesn't matter. The initial height is zero. Okay, so we have y sub zero means at time zero equals zero. Okay, what else? Okay, we had one person say initial velocity and one said acceleration and gravity. So my acceleration is minus g. My initial velocity was 13.0 meters per second, if I remember correctly. Well, it just said 13. I only got two safe figs. So that's what was given. And then I'm asked, what is the maximum height? So what I'm looking for so I put Y subscript of max for the maximum height. Now there's another inferred but not given thing. What's my starting and ending points in this picture? Okay, so this is my starting, right? Where's the end? For finding the maximum height, my end is at the top. And yes, I care very dearly. Because what condition do I know about that point? The speed is zero. And so I'm going to add to my given. It's not really given. It's inferred. So this here was inferred. Okay, come on. That was inferred. Oh, okay. Change my pin. Change it back. Change it back. That was inferred and... And I'm going to put V subscript one because this is the first of the three questions is zero. It, it, it is the final for this stretch. It's not the final for the ball in its entirety, but it is the, the final for question one. So I could have called it VF or VF one if you like. The, the names you give your variables is not significant really, as long as you know what they mean. So now I have all of the information. Step three, identify exactly what needs to be determined in the problem. Okay, I've already done that, Y max. I guess I should have put equals question mark just so it's really clear that I'm looking for. Now find an equation or set of equations that help you solve the problem. So my, my idea here was the kinematic equations. So now I have to decide which kinematic equation is going to work best for me. So we have the kinematic equations up there. If we look at the variables, I have okay, y, remember y and x are just positions. So knowing y in those equations, I just replace all the x's with y. Something. So I have position, I have initial speed, 
I have acceleration. What am I looking for? Maximum height. I'm not looking for time, am I? So I don't have time and I'm not looking for time. In that case, what equation would probably be the best for me? Um, okay, I could use the average velocity, but that has time in it. The bottom one, that doesn't have time. So I'm going to use this one for this problem because of the variables I have and what I'm looking for. And so I'm going to choose this equation. And doing my work, I have y1 minus y0 equals v1 squared minus v0 squared all over 2a. I always solve and then put in numbers, except for I, I evaluate zeros first because zeros just get in the way. So if I look at what's zero, y zero, y initial was zero. So I just set that to zero. And v1 was zero, so I set that to zero. And this becomes easier Now, you may like to put numbers in first, and that's fine. I read an article talking about the master problem solver puts in the numbers later. The novice puts them in first because to the novice problem solver, symbols like A and V are confusing. But after you've done a bunch of problems, they start to take on a life. And so to me, seeing the equation has much more meaning than just having numbers in there. Because I can see what happens if B changes. I can see what happens if A changes. So that's why I don't put the numbers in until I'm at the end of a problem, which is where I am now. E equals minus my initial speed, 13 meters per second. Quantity squared over 2 times my acceleration, minus 9.80 meters per second squared. That's equal to 169 meters squared per second squared. Divided by 19.6 meters per second squared. Notice I keep my units in there. I'm not going to mark you wrong if you don't put them in, but you might not have the right answer. Because, you know, if your units don't work out, you know you're wrong. Or if you have, like, meters per kilometer, well, you're off by three orders of magnitude. So that's why I keep them in there. I can see that one of my meters is going to cancel and both of my second squareds cancel. So I'm left with units of meters, which is good because my height should be in meters. And then I have to 169 divided by 19.6. What is that? Okay, so I just put 8.6 because I only have two significant figures. Um, and I don't think I'm going to use that number again. Otherwise, I keep more digits and then record 8.6 as my answer. We keep more digits for going further. Yes, Russell. I had meters per second quantity squared. So meters per second quantity squared means meters squared per second squared. No. Okay, and then I'm dividing by meters per second squared. So the per second squared divided by per second squared cancels. I thought I just said. Yeah, the, the acceleration has units of meters per second squared. Okay, so now we found its maximum elevation. Does that number make sense? If I look back at the picture, well, it said that it, at position one here, it was at 8.10 meters. So it had to be bigger than 8.10 meters. So yeah, that probably makes sense to me. And let's see. Yeah, that was the last thing. Make sure it's all reasonable. You have the right units <laughs> and the right sign, whatever. Okay, problem one done. Problem two, what is the speed at each designated height going up and down? So problem two, I'm looking for speed. I still have y initial is zero, v initial is 13 meters per second, a is minus g, and now I'm looking for the speed at different y's. Don't we just use the same yeah. equation and solve for v1? That's right. 
We use the same equation because we once again don't have time and we're not looking for time. So we're going to use the same equation. So now we've kind of shortcutted. We've already laid everything out and we just said, okay, what's different? The only thing that's different is we now know height and we're looking for speed. Using the same, you know, we determine which equation to use and we go with it. So I'm only going to calculate one speed. Um, what would you prefer? Y1, Y2, Y3? Which one should I find the speed for? Just choose. It's not complicated. Okay, Y3. So we're just going to do it for... So we had, going back to our initial... Well, <laughs> our initial equation was Y minus Y initial equals V squared minus V initial squared over 2a. Now I'm solving for v. I still have my y initial is zero, but that's the only zero I can put in now. So that's why I came back to the original equation that rather than trying to go with what I'd solved before, because it is not the same. So solving this for v initial, and I know you guys all know your math, but I still model doing everything. So if I want to solve for V initial, the first thing I have to do is multiply or divide by everything that it is multiplied or divided by. And so that's multiplied or divided by 2A, and so is the V0. So I'm keeping the V squared and the V0 squared together and multiplying everything by 2A so that I can cancel these 2As. So I have 2AY equals v squared minus v0 squared. Now that I have the v, the v by itself, I add away the additive portion. And what you do to one side, you'll always do to the other side. I know that doesn't look like a v, but it was. So that gives me v squared is equal to v initial squared plus 2ay, and then as you heard somebody say, I have to square root both sides. And so when I square root, there is something we often forget that comes with the square root. Do you remember what comes with the square root? Plus or minus. Plus or minus. So we're going to have two answers. Speed is equal to plus or minus the square root, the initial speed squared, plus 2ay. So now, speed is equal to plus or minus the square root of, my v initial is 13 meters per second squared, plus 2, my acceleration minus 9.80 meters per second squared. And based on the random choice made by sophomore student David Chapman, I'll stop that eventually, of minus 5.10 meters, I believe it was. Then I can calculate this. So I can't do this in my head. I need a little help. Please note it's minus 9.8 times minus 5.1. Negative times a negative is a positive. So you are not going to run into, I have the square root of a negative value. Max? Sorry, what is the y value you put in? The y value was 5.1 because David randomly chose to do it, come on, to do it for this case here. So square root of that is 16.4. So plus or minus 16.4. Nice. Almost got the minus in. Plus or minus 16.4 meters per second. So we have two answers. Could be going up or could be going down. Which do you think it's doing? Going down. Going down, right. So what sense does the plus value mean? If it had been projected from down further, that's the speed it would have had coming up at that elevation. But it never was coming up at that elevation, so it's meaningless for this problem. Right. So sometimes you have to logically exclude an answer. So this is minus 16.4 meters per second because it's the only logical answer. 
We'll have other things we're solving for the time. You'll have to use the quadratic equation. And you'll have time is equal to minus 0.6 seconds or plus 1.3 seconds. You're like, well, which one is the time when it lands? It clearly landed after you threw it, not before you threw it. And the negative represents the time that it would have been launched if it had been launched from the same elevation and landed wherever. So you have to think about what those things mean. Now, the last question, last part of this question, come on, scroll. Having this in my hand, it has a proximity thing. The last part of the question, how tall is the cliff if it hits the ground 10 seconds after thrown up? Now we have time. So we have time to add into our equations or into our data, and we're looking for height. So we have the initial speed, we have the initial height, we have the acceleration, we have the time, and we're looking for the final height. Only one equation incorporates all of those. Which one's that? The one we use for almost all of our problems. So now, for step three, I have y final equals y initial plus v. I put a y initial speed in the y direction initial t plus one half a y t squared. There, I put everything in terms of y. Why? Because <laughs> I'm funny that way. One of these is a zero. Y initial. V y initial is not zero. Ah, look, I have two different places with time. If I was solving for time, I'd be, wah, wah, got to use the quadratic. But I'm not solving for time. What am I solving for? The final height. The final height. Hey, it's already solved for that. I just got to put in numbers. No wah, wah here. So that's 13 meters per second multiplied by 10.0 seconds plus one half minus 9.80 meters per second squared times 10.0 seconds quantity squared. So 130 meters minus 490 meters is equal to 360. I don't think so. See, 9.8. Divided by 2 is 4.9 times 100. Right, 10 squared is 100. Oh, right, 10 squared. So the cliff was apparently 360 meters high if the top is zero and the bottom is 360 meters below that. Yeah, is it really though? Because is it really? No, we threw the ball up. Yes, start with. we threw the ball up. So don't we need to subtract the highest point that the ball went to? No. We do not. That's a good question. But we don't because this problem was just relating the starting and ending points. And so we had that 13 meters per second when we threw it up in there. Right? If we did, if we dropped it, we would have had zero for the first term. It would have given us 490 meters. Okay. But because we threw it up, it was in the air longer for that. Yeah. That's a good question. The assumption here is that the hand is at the height of the cliff, right? Which obviously is probably not right. It's probably at least a meter above. So, yeah, if they don't give you the height at which it's launched, you just assume it's launched from ground level for a problem like this. You know, for we'll we'll have problems like you know a batter hits a baseball, comes off the bat at a height of 0.43 meters off the ground. Clears a fence that's, you know, 1.7 meters off the ground. You know, we'll, we'll specify those in some problems. This one here didn't say just to see. All right. Any questions about the solutions I just did? Judith. No, that's why... That's what you're talking about? Yeah. All right. Time for you to get together with the other people at your table 
and do this problem. A dragster starts from rest and accelerates at a constant rate of 1.00 G. What does it mean if it's accelerating at 1.00 G? Yes, one times the magnitude of the acceleration of gravity. So it's accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared. How fast is it going after 400 meters, and how long does it take to cover 400 meters? Remember, we're assuming constant acceleration because that's all we can do here. So I will shrink this down so I can once again have the steps for problem solving visible along with it, just so you remember. Okay. Hmm. I should draw a picture, think about what's going on, write down what I know, write down what I'm looking for, find what equation I'm going to use, do my math, make sure the answer makes sense. And you're working with people, so don't just isolate and say, yeah, I got it, are you done? Yeah. Would acceleration be positive or negative in this case? The acceleration is positive. Okay. And if you have questions, do ask them, right? That's the benefit of joining a class versus just saying go home and we'll drop. No, that's what we're looking for. Yeah. So how can we use the last? The one. Um, if you choose to say it's going to end 400 years before it starts, we could no, say no, no. zero is v one hundred sixty-seven. Zero. Zero. That's a lot easier than zero and four hundred. Because the initial velocity is zero and the zero. That's the easiest way. Because that makes sense. That's fine. Four hundred is zero. 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 First, you saw. Okay, these are zero, right? Yeah. Do you get that? Yeah. Okay, so now all you have to do is. So we're solving for this, right? So then you break this over to this. 
one person who's completed the problem and worked it correctly which is good assuming you guys are working together that means everybody's seen it modeled correctly so of course that was problem two and I had a problem three we only have five minutes left so we won't be doing problem three it's a similar problem but it requires different ideas so let's look at the ideas for problem three now still kinematic equations but we have here, the problem states the highest vertical leap at the NBA tryouts was by DJ Stevens, who jumped 46 inches, which when you think about it is jumping really high. That's two inches short of four feet. How fast did he leave the ground and how long was he in air? 
So in this problem, we're asked for the initial speed. What do we know? What's given? Okay. We know he started at zero and ended at 46. We know that he was accelerating at negative 90. Okay, we know the acceleration. That's implied. Uh, no, the initial velocity wasn't zero. I mean, here's me jumping with initial velocity of zero. See that? Here, initial velocity is not zero. Right. No, the velocity of the peak is zero. Okay, so we know the maximum height. We know that the, the velocity at that maximum height was zero. So we split the problem in half. Right? There's creativity. That, this is where the problem solving the analytical thinking, the critical thinking of physics has to come in. You're like, wow, if I split the problem, then I can solve it. If I don't split the problem, I have a real difficulty here because my y initial is zero, my y final is zero, my v initial is equal to minus v final. I can't solve anything with that information. But if I split it in half and say, okay, going from the ground to the maximum height, then I can do it. And then it becomes just like what we did. You are looking for the initial speed, you know the final speed, that is the speed at the top, and you know the distance. And so then you calculate the speed at which you leave the ground just like what you finished doing. And then once you found that, you use that to find the time to go from the ground to the maximum height and double it. All right, so what we've learned today <laughs> was how to work with kinematic equations. Oh boy, I, I forgot to change the slide. We learned how to work with kinematic equations today and you'll just have more practice with it over the weekend for homework. Remember, if you have questions, contact me. Um, I love to help students. <laughs> As Jenna knows, I didn't let her leave. I told her I love working problems with students. It's what I do. All right, have a great weekend. Thank you.